All right, guys. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm James, your neighborhood realtor, and I am with a special guest today, uh, George Gonzalez. I'm going to let him just talk a little bit about um, who he is, what he does, but just, um, just you know, just to summarize it is that he's a mortgage broker with JW Capital. But um, I'll let him go ahead and explain his story. So, George, how you doing? If you could tell everyone, um, you know, who you are, what you do, and just, you know, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks, James. And uh, I'm doing really great uh, on this Tuesday morning. Um, so, yes, my name is George Gonzalez. I work for JW Capital. We're a local mortgage brokerage out of Orlando, Florida. Um, what I am is I'm one of the senior loan officers and sales managers uh, for the Southeast region, more in Miami uh, Kendo area, but we service, you know, all over Florida. Uh, we do residential loans and we do commercial loans as well. So depending on the criteria that we have from different clients, um, we service a lot of different types of people. So mostly residential, you know, real estate transactions we do here in Florida, but on the commercial area, we do uh, loans all over the United States. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. And all right, so let's go ahead and just get into some of these questions. And sure. uh, all right, so um, I guess as a mortgage broker, and mm -hmm. I guess um, let's just bring it back to the beginning. A lot of people don't know, um, I guess, the difference between or when they going to when they want to go ahead and look for a home, they think that they have to go ahead and go to a bank and all that. Mm -hmm. And we just said that you're a mortgage broker. So a lot of people may not understand what a mortgage broker is. So can right. you just talk a little bit about uh, what the difference is uh, between a mortgage broker and a bank? And yeah. uh, what advantages does working with a mortgage broker offer compared to a traditional bank? Sure. And I, I'm glad you asked that question because not a lot of people do know that difference between going to a bank and, and finding a mortgage broker. So basically, uh, a traditional bank, you know, they're going to have a certain amount of products that they can offer and they can only offer that. That's it. Um, the main advantage with the broker is that I have access to so many different lenders that I have so many different types of products that I can offer from the Home Tower Heroes program, one town, uh, one percent down conventional programs, bank statement loans for some type of, uh, you know, self-employed borrower that can't show their tax returns. You know, a traditional bank like Chase or JP Morgan, um, you know, Wells Fargo they can't offer you that type of program because it's just not something that they can bank on because these banks keep these loans on their on the um, portfolios and their balance sheets and later on they decide to sell it off um, but as a lender or as a broker you know i have the availability to you know kind of critique different types of loans and find the best program available whenever i speak to a client so that's one of the main advantages that i can provide a lot more product offerings compared to a traditional bank, you know, brick and mortar. Uh, the other main advantage is as well as that regular traditional banks, they take very long times to uh, close loans. You know, traditionally they're between 30 and 45 days in closing, whereas an average broker uh, for our company, especially we're closing loans from beginning of the getting of the contract to closing within 14 business days. Oh, that's great to hear. So, um, so I guess what you are trying to say is that, uh, with the, I guess, a traditional bank, they may just offer like one type of mortgage product. Whereas right. they offer, they offer traditional products that we offer as well: conventional FHA, USDA, and VA loans. But that's it. That's all they can offer because mm -hmm. that's what their product is tailored to. Not only that, their overlays, you know, certain rules that they have on these programs, they have a lot more of rules compared to a broker where I can take it to a lender that has a different type of rule or they go off based of what the traditional market will, you know, take in as a loan. So it's a, a lot harder to get a loan from a traditional bank compared to a broker, because again, we have the availability to send the loan to a bunch of different lenders to make sure that we're able to close it correctly. Gotcha. Gotcha. That is really good to know. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and move on just for the sake of time. Um, so, um, a lot of times I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you may hear it too as well, or um, we hear in the news about, uh, you know, just the fears of the current housing market. So um, are the concerns and anxieties people have about this um, current housing market, are they justified? And also what advice uh, would you be able to give to potential home buyers who may be fearful of the market? Right. And, and, and to my experience and, you know, to everything that I've been seeing on my own, 
you know, everybody's anxieties right now with this current housing market is very justified. You know, within the last two years, just in Florida, average home prices have increased over 30 percent, you know, and it's getting a lot harder to qualify home buyers because not only is the pricing that they saw two years ago has increased now by 30 percent, but the interest rates have gone up exponentially. You know, 2020, 2019, we started out with very low interest rates and it got even lower after COVID. So everybody started buying up and now these started to drive the prices because we have no availability or no um, houses left to give out. And it's just causing a huge increase in prices you know, for the average buyer. Um, you know, so th their anxieties are very justified. You know, I don't see right now in the next three to four years that there's going to be a crash. Uh, I know a lot of people are thinking that that's coming, but it's not. It's going to be more of a market correction. Um, which is not going to happen in the next three to four years, where we're going to see a slight drop in prices between 10 to 15%. Um, but again, my advice to all my clients, whenever I do pre-approve someone, their anxieties are more focused on what the rate's going to be at the end of the day. And I always tell them that you're not marrying the rate, but you're marrying the home. Because mm -hmm. this is going to be your first home. And you're probably forever home. But at the end of the day, you're not marrying that rate. Whatever you get today in 2023 is going to be very different in 2024. And it could be even more different in 2025 because these interest rates are going to fluctuate day by day, year by year, depending on the market goes. And if in a year you still are at a 6% and the interest rates skyrocket to eight, imagine you're trying to buy a house at 8% instead of 6%. Mm -hmm. So I always tell them you're marrying the home, not the rate. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point right there. And I never heard it like that. So I definitely want to go ahead and take that. You're marrying the rate. Oh, no, you're not marrying the rate, but you're marrying, marrying the, the home. home. Yeah. You're not the rate. The rate can change, okay. but the yeah. house, that is yours. It's better to have something that it's tangible and that you can touch and feel than to worry about a rate that in a year, if the interest rates drop from 6% to 4%, you're already winning. You yeah. have the house, you got the equity, and now you can refi and get and just lower your interest rate. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really good information right there. I hope you guys are are taking that uh, really because, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you hear it all the time about the one thing is it's always about the interest rate, interest rate, interest rate. But uh, yeah, and it's, you a know. Very, it's a very important component. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of people see a six and a half percent. They're like, oh, I really want six percent. Because in their mind, psychologically, 6% looks better than 6.5. Mm -hmm. But mathematically, when you compound it over 30 years, that payment from 6.5 to 6% will probably save you 75 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It's just a psychological thing that I've seen over the years that people just like to have something that looks nice compared to what they see mathematically. Because they're not thinking about that. They're just thinking about, I got a 6% rate, not a 6.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good points. Great points, George. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So we talked about the interest rates and uh, people's fears and why you shouldn't uh, be, you know, so fearful of that. Uh, can you share some details about um, any programs that may be out there uh, that may be a special benefit for prospective home buyers? Right. So uh, like we said before, there's a lot of different programs that a brokers have availability to. One of them, you know, being that we're pushing a lot now uh, is the 1% down uh, conventional program. You know, that's spe specifically tailored to certain lenders that are offering that, which is not offered at a traditional bank. You know, that's what puts us above a traditional brick and mortar, you know, Chase and Wells Fargo. You know, these lenders are giving us an opportunity to get more clients and have people who don't have enough, you know, for a down payment and closing costs to buy a home that they want, you know, to in increase the market. So that 1% down program, you know, to get into a little bit more details, what it is, is that the lender is giving them a 2% credit to help with their initial down payment. Mm -hmm. And it's a conventional loan. So instead of paying 3% for a first time home buyer, you end up paying 1% and the remainder of your closing costs. So that's a big jump. You know, for a lot of people, that extra 2% is, you know, it could be upwards of five to $6,000 that they're not yeah. putting down. So that helps out a lot. It alleviates that. And, you know, another great program that we have access to is the Hometown Heroes program. You know, everybody's raving about it. I've closed many of it as soon as it got approved, you know, for Florida and, you know, big lenders. And 
it's very beneficial for a lot of people that are in that industry. But now, like you said, come July 1st, um, you know, Ron DeSantis has now opened this program up to everybody that's not in the medical field or a veteran. You know, this is going to be available for everybody in the state of Florida, no matter what occupation you have. So what that is, you know, doing for us is that it's giving them a 5% closing cost assistance. And it's, it works like a down payment assistance program. You know, it, it's a second mortgage on the house, but it's a second mortgage that you're not paying for for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You only have to pay that when you decide to refinance or sell the home. So, you know, that's helping a lot of people now, especially come July 1st, a lot of people are gonna, now are going to have access to this program, meaning they're going to have a lot more assistance in order for them to buy new homes. Wow, man, that's crazy. So when you say down payment assistance, um, one thing, just being familiarized with down payment assistance, you have to go and take like a eight hour class. Is mm -hmm. that something similar uh, with uh, no? Because with down payment assistance, the regular down payment assistance loans, those are a second mortgage that does have an interest rate tied to it. You have to pay a certain amount every month. And depending which one you get, you know, it's still not going to be enough to help with closing costs. You know, it'll cover a large portion of it, but it's not giving you even more than what the Home Tower Heroes program is because down payment assistance is only going to cover that 3%. But this Home Tower Heroes program gives you an extra 2%. So wow. you're getting upwards of 5% back to help with closing costs. For example, a client that I have closing tomorrow, he's buying a home for $232,000. He's putting 3.5% down. The Hometown Heroes program is giving him 5% back, which is upwards of $11,000 in closing costs. Wow. And at the end of it, he's only paying $5,000 to close on the home. Wow. It's wow. a great program. It's one of the best programs that I've come across that's been helping a lot of my clients, you know, get into the home they want. See, that, see that's amazing because a lot of people don't believe that there's actually deals um, that can actually happen, or especially in this market. That there's mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of programs that are out there uh, for you to go ahead and get you into a home. Right. And even on the traditional programs, like I, even if they before Hometown Heroes, where we didn't have a certain occupation, you know, even when we have just a regular conventional or FHA loan, I always guide my clients in a way that these loans can help you still with down payment assistance. You know, with FHA, for example, if I pre approve someone for 250000 and they want to buy a house for two twenty five, dollars they know before they go put in an offer, that we can increase that purchase price to go up 6% because FHA allows for a 6% seller concession. Wow. What this does is that the seller is getting the same price of the home that they wanted while helping the client with their closing costs. So even a regular FHA loan, you're getting 1% more than a Home Tower Heroes program. But wow. you know, not a lot of people know that loophole. You know, mm -hmm. even real estate agents that I talk to, they don't know that loophole. And it's worked fantastically. See, and that's why it's very important to work with a knowledgeable realtor uh, who has people on their team, such mm -hmm. as George, so that they could, you know, find these, uh, you know, I won't say loopholes, but um, just different ways. It's just not even a gray, it's, it's, a, it's not even a gray area. It's right mm -hmm. there in the guidelines. It tells mm -hmm. us a seller can contribute 6% of the purchasing power of that property as a seller credit. And on conventional, you can do 3%. BA, you can do 4%. So it's right there in their guidelines. You mm -hmm. just need to know a loan officer that's a, that's very knowledgeable, that sees a situation, you know, a client doesn't have enough for the closing costs or is right there. We can increase that purchase price and help both the seller get exactly what they want and help the client get exactly what they need in assistance. Gotcha. See, that's why it's good to have someone like George on your team right there. Right. All right, George. So um, this is going to be uh, one of my last questions here. Um, so I just want to I know we've been talking about uh, more home buyers um, and all that. So I want to kind of just shift a little bit um, mm -hmm. more towards an investor standpoint. Right. Um, so there's um, a lot of investors out there who may have the cash, uh, may have um, even the credit to go ahead and buy a home. And I know that we talked about, you know, the fears in the market, but mm -hmm. uh, 
So what advice do you have regarding the current housing market and the potential opportunities or challenges that investors may encounter? So one of the main challenges that I've seen a lot with some of the investors that I work with that are buying, you know, Airbnb properties or long-term rent to properties uh, in the state of Florida is that they're looking for the maximum amount of profit in within the first year. And that's right there off the bat. I just tell them, listen, your first year of owning this home right now in this current market is not going to hit the profit margin that you need. Right. And there's two reasons why a the housing market right now for investors Again, it's 30% higher than two years before. So you're paying a lot more for that property than you did in 2020 and 2021. Number two, interest rates for investors are a lot higher compared to an average consumer. And you have to put more down. So minimum 15% down with a decent credit score of 700, you're still in the seven to seven and a half percent interest rate or even higher, depending on the program. So what I tell them is like, you can't be looking at your first years of profit in order to make this happen. Again, going back to you're marrying the property, not the rate. Hmm. I go back to them and I tell them, you need to look at this over a five to 10 year period. Within those next five to 10 years, you already know that you're going to have the equity to pull out cash when you need to. In those five years, interest rates are going to drop and raise. So there's a possibility for you to decrease your interest rate, pull out cash and still save money. And now your profits are going to escalate or even rise between those ten, five to 10 years. So what I tell them again, you need to be focusing on properties that are going to make profit within the next couple of years, because you know that you can leverage that property enough in order for you to drop your interest rates when it, the time comes in order to use for rehabs and increase rent and then possibly sell it for more because now you've used that equity and you put it back into the property to increase the purchase price. And one other thing that I'm always telling them too, you know, a lot of them are from out of state and they want to buy a condo down here in Miami. And I tell them, no, there's no reason for you to be buying down here in Miami. And I live here and (laughs) it's a terrible market. You know, everything is overpriced where the highest price city in the state of Florida right now, uh, next to West Palm Beach. Um, And I tell them, you know, we need to be focusing more on areas in Florida that are seeing rapid growth, but not as much growth as Miami. You know, the last two years, we've seen over 30% of our population increase because of out in town investors and a lot of people coming in and buying up properties. What's that's causing again is the prices up here are too expensive. If you buy a rental property down here, you're going to be out rented or out priced because nobody's renting. There's empty buildings everywhere of people not being able to afford the rent. So what I suggest to them is go outside of this market and look for markets that are a little bit smaller, somewhere like in the central Florida area or even North Florida area, like Inverness or Ocala, small growth, decently priced homes, and everybody is focused enough to make the rent there because it's cheap enough to own. And in the next five years, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Their property prices are gonna go up, they're able to rent for more, and they've made a lot more profit. Wow, man, that is really good advice right there, um, especially you know to your investors. Um, yeah, so there are you know opportunities out there for investors. You just have to really know, especially in, um, in Florida, you know where to look. So as you said, exactly. Miami may not be the best spot, but Central Florida may be. Uh, so uh, that's really good to know. So, uh, George, I don't want to take up more, uh, all your time, but is there anything else that you may want to, uh, you know, tell our viewers and also like, you know, how um, to reach out for any questions or anything? Yeah, if uh, you want to reach out, I do have, you know, a LinkedIn that has all my information. That's where I get most of my clients. Um, and, you know, all of our consultations that we do at JW Capital are free. A lot of times when you go to a brick and mortar, they need to you know, charge you for application fees or you know, they don't do a very accurate type of representation of pre-approvals. So if you want something that's gonna be done correct and you want a free consultation, just send me a message on LinkedIn or follow me on, on Instagram as well. Uh, I have a Instagram uh, lending page is underscore your Miami loan officer. And you can find me there and send me a message and, you know, we can have a free consultation, quick talk and see what I can get done for you. All right. There it goes, guys. George Gonzalez of JW Capital. Thank you so much 
And um, I'm looking forward to hearing the response to this. This was uh, a, a great interview. So thank you so much, George. Hey, thanks, James. Have a good one, man. All right.